Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to Holopon Solo Sagas. So today we are going to play the first full proper uh, episode, uh, but it's our second second session of Alien. So, uh, let's try and get to grips with this. So we're trying to play Alien, the uh, free league role-playing game, Alien the role-playing game. I'll hold the book up, or I'll put it over here, because uh, if I hold it up, uh, I noticed last time uh, that it reacts with the green screen and you get like a weird s move uh, Alien, free league. Uh, free league publishing's uh, Alien role-playing game. Uh, it's not the first ever Alien role-playing game. There were others, I think, uh, West End Games did one. Anyway, I digress. So we're attempting to play it. Now what we're gonna be using, uh, we'll be using the Parts Per Million uh, solo guide on playing the Aliens role-playing game. That's what we're gonna be using for this. Now, uh, it's it's not a fully fledged instructions that I have. Uh, so we'll try and piece it together and work out what we're doing. So, recap. We are a bald, we have, well, so we, we, we've not actually started, we're not a bald yet. We'll do the prologue uh, to, to the game first. Uh, but we have our crew of four. We're aboard a, uh, a CM88H Bison class ship by Lockmark, which is the same ship as the uh, Nostromo, Nostromo uh, the ship from the film Alien. Uh, it's a towing transport vessel. Uh, we are playing campaign mode, uh, which was requested from uh, the members. Uh, and we are playing space truckers, uh, which was the campaign mode version that was requested. So we have, we decided that, so the Bison class has a crew of seven, but at the moment we've only generated four individuals out of those seven. We're gonna say that whatever happens, and we don't know yet, uh, those four are the ones that are gonna come out of cryo to deal with the situation. If we need anyone else, we will generate them as we need someone. So if we need, say, a uh, security officer, we'll generate a colonial marine, if we need another engineer, we'll generate another engineer. It depends what happens. So what we have out of our crew uh, of the Red Dwarf, uh, we have, uh, I'll go through the way up there just here. We have Kat, who is a company agent who has joined us. We don't know why yet, we haven't decided. We have AJ Rimmer, who is a navigation officer. We have Crichton, who is a synthetic. He is a medic and science officer or science uh, person. And then we have Dave Lister, who is a roughneck, an engineer. Those are our fourth on board the USCSS Red Dwarf. Lockmark, uh, it has an AI on board, uh, uh, air scrubbers, uh, internal cargo bays that can take uh, 5,000 tons each, two of them. Cryo that can take 10 people. A docking umbilical cord, so we can dock with another vehicle. Uh, we have two escape uh, craft. These escape craft have no cryo capability and can keep someone alive for 10 days. Uh, we have a galley that will take 50 people. Uh, oh, the air scrubbers, uh, sorry, the galley will take 10 people. The air scrubbers can keep 50 people alive. A med lab and a tractor hatch. The tractor hatch is uh, this bit at the top of the bison class, of the H class bison, uh, that will allow us to attach up to a multiple million ton towing vessel on it. Uh, we have a faster than light capability of, I think it's six, and if we tow something, that will double it to, uh, to where's far? Oh, of eight, that will double it to 16. Now the faster than light capability within this is how many days it takes you to travel a parsec. Where's my map? Here it is. Uh, and on the map, the, part, the, uh, the map that comes with uh, this so I'm using the starter set, uh, which I purchased in the Alien Day Special, and the core rulebook, which I also purchased in the Alien Day Special. So unlike normal, I didn't get any of this stuff sent to me. Uh, so we have a uh, parsec is one of these squares here. Uh, and so it will take eight days for our, for the Red Dwarf to travel that one parsec between there. So. Uh, what I said was I would uh, also work out our starting place. Now within the uh, back of the uh, book on, I think it's chapter seven, which is talking about the ships and surviving in space, 
it gives you a starter space station out in the fringe. Uh, the space station is called the uh, NOVGO -N -O rod. Nogov rod? Nogov rod? I don't know. Uh, Nogov rod. Uh, it's outside, it orbits the star Alpha Fornicus. I believe that's Fornicus. F-O-R-N-A-C-I-S. Fornicus. Uh, so I've marked that on the map. Now, there we go. That's a bit of a recap. About five minutes worth of recap. So uh, that's, that's basically where we are. So we are docked. Our main ship, so the Red Dwarf, is docked with that space station. Uh, we are here to collect a job. And what is the job, you ask? I could hear you all say, what's the job? Uh, so what it is, we rolled this last session. The job is, it's a normal type of job. We are being asked to transport to a nearby system, so we'll select one in a minute. Uh, uh, it's got one complication. We are getting 300,000 for the crew uh, as an extra bonus. The employee is the colonial administration. Uh, and we are being asked to transport a huge quantity of ice and rare, um, basically liquids. Uh, either water or ice or, or a mixture of rare liquids. We don't know what it is. We're being asked to transport it uh, to that hostile planet. Uh, and I guess we'll leave it in orbit and then they'll shuttle it back down again. That's what we're being asked to do. So, in the pre part of the game, the prologue, we need to get our getting a mission. So what I thought we would do is we'll do it cinematically. So before we go into uh, Act 1, uh, where we will roll our theme, which comes from uh, uh, the Parts Per Million book, and our complication, which will come from the core book, which is Act 1, we'll roll in three acts. So the book guides you into having a prologue and three acts. We'll do that, though it's campaign play. We don't know, we don't know. So if we were doing cinematic play, we were definitely gonna see an alien. Definitely a xenomorph for some form is gonna turn up. That's not necessarily gonna happen during this game. So if you're here for an alien, you may be disappointed by the end, but we don't know, it might turn up anyway. I don't know. Uh, that's the beauty of the game. Uh, so uh, we will do this as a flashback scene. We have everybody uh, getting ready to go into FDL and getting the ship ready. We are, I've decided that what we're going to say is that uh, we haven't, people haven't worked with Cat, the agent before, but the company agent has come along. We don't know why, and the company agent will be in a flashback scene uh, as people are getting ready for FDL and getting the ship ready and sort of attaching the ship to the cargo uh, to get it to be transported. Uh, and we'll roll a an encounter as well, see if there's a ship that comes by before we go into FTL. Uh, but we'll have, in flashback, we've got the company agent, Cat, who's looking really sort of slick. It's got really uh, slick hair. Uh, I could actually put a picture up of Cat. Uh, it's got slick hair and a smart suit uh, and a bit of a disarming smile. And uh, uh, he is explaining uh, to uh, they are explaining to the core part of the crew, so the three who have worked together, which is Rimmer, Lister, and Crichton. They all know each other and have worked together before. Uh, they don't necessarily get on very well. Uh, and you can see that uh, Rimmer and Kat seem to be, uh, so Kat is mainly talking to Rimmer as the navigation of, and ignoring the other two, in particularly being rude and ignoring Crichton, uh, because what I said that he doesn't like uh, synthetics uh, and so he's explaining the job that we need to transport the uh, transport the cargo now it says to a nearby system so I, I so if we've got if we've got eight days per parsec 16 days per parsec uh, we could say that I don't know let's say that what's a reasonable amount of time that they would get paid 300 grand for 300 grand between seven of them. So if it was between 10, that'd be 30 grand each. Uh, 30 grand for three months work is probably all right. So we could say, so that's three months worth of work. I'm gonna get my calculator out because I'm gonna have to do, <laughs> do some maths, excuse me. So if we're saying that uh, it's gonna be three months, so three months is 90 days. So 90 days worth of travel, uh, we will say that, so power traveling one parsec, because we're towing, is gonna take 16 days. So that is, we'll call it seven parsecs. 
So something within seven parsecs of here. So we're here. Uh, so we're basically, we're gonna have to dis disin uh, uh, disengage from the space station from Nova Novagrod, Novagod, Novagod, Novagrod, from Nova, we'll call it Novo. From Novo, uh, we're gonna have to disengage from Novo. It's not really Novo, is it? From Gorod, we'll call it Gorod. We're gonna have to disengage from Gorod uh, and then track then attach to the towing vessel, vessel, which will make a piloting roll to make sure that goes all right. Uh, and then we need to travel, and it's the distance we've been asked to travel is seven. So we'll go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, can you still see that? I think so. So somewhere in quite a big space around here. Now what have we got that's interesting around here that's got some, some sort of historical context? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eridani, that sounds interesting. I really want it to be the full seven because that would give, that would like give the pay more value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To the start, what's this? So this is the United America. No, we don't we want it to be out somewhere weird. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go, we're going to, to Beta Virginis. There's a sort of an unnamed planet We'll, we'll roll up, uh, there's this thing on rolling planets. So we are going to, I think this was Don C who suggested the point and stickers. So we're going here, so we're, we're being asked to transport this liquids to this place here. And the, the colony on here is, so we don't know what it is, but let's see if we can do, uh, oh, hold on, let's table here, colony names. We're gonna call it Nero. We're, we, it's gonna be, I'm gonna roll three dice and we'll get those numbers. It's gonna be MT, oh, I'll discuss those afterwards. Uh, MT154, MT154, Nero. This is the planet where it's, I've got hostile stuff on board. Uh, there's, we don't know what's there. We, we're not told what's there. Uh, somebody asks, uh, let's say Lister, Lister will ask, uh, what's, what's, what's on Nero? And Cat's going to say, well, I don't really think we need to know that. So it's very nice of you to ask that, but I don't really think that's needed uh, to be asked. We'll go, we'll do, uh, uh, Lister is going to sort of push it a bit and he's going to see if he can find out what's there and then we'll roll it. So Lister has a manipulation of what, might as well do what, do something to start off with. He's got a manipulation of one and he is going to attempt to manipulate Cat who has a manipulation of two. So uh, Lister has three for empathy and one for manipulation, uh, getting no hits. Cat uh, has four for empathy and two for manipulation, uh, getting two hits. So uh, Lister is attempting to get out of Cat what it is, and Cat is just, is just running rings around Lister. Uh, he's describing various different uh, policies that the company has, why they're getting the bonus they're getting, how if they get there and they drop it all off there, he may be able to negotiate a higher bonus. He's, he can do that for them because that's why he's here. He is their friend. And so uh, I'm gonna, I'll write that down. So Kat is trying to make Lister feel that he's on his side. And so uh, they don't really know what's on MT154 but they do know that the, the MT154 needs whatever this liquid is. So let me just quickly go through these. Instead of using uh, Peter's uh, guide in the Parts One Million book to uh, do yes, no questions, I'm gonna use this that we developed with, oh, I can't remember who it was who made the decision. I do apologize if you're watching this. You're the one, I think it was Mr. Grumbly. I think you were the one who told me about the fudge dice to use and I really like it. So basically, uh, if we come up with three uh, crosses, it's an extreme yes, or two crosses is still an extreme yes, one is just a yes. Blanks is neutral uh, or complicated. Uh, positives and negatives will cancel each other out. Negatives, uh, three, two or three negatives is extreme. One is a just a no. So that's basically it with the fudge dice. So yeah, so then we've got the flashback and then we're flashing back to uh, the present time, which is them sort of pre prepping the cryopods, uh, 
programming, so Rimmer's in programming uh, the engine at uh, the engine, and Rimmer is attempting to. So what, who's got piloting? Who would pilot this? Rimmer's got a piloting one, maybe Rimmer. So Rimmer and Crichton are both attempting to do the pilot. So they've got piloting. Uh, maybe we'll have uh, uh, Lister does not have piloting. So Lister's basically attempting to prep stuff. So we're gonna give Lister a heavy machinery role to make sure that everything gets prepped properly. So he's prepping, making sure that everything's in order, doing last final checks of all the engines and the, the computer systems. Uh, we've got one hit, yep. So everything is going fine. So the engines, we're not gonna to need to write down any complications with engines. He checks everything, puts final uh, issues in. Uh, the three crew that nobody's met before, they're all already getting into the FTL process. Now we've, we, as an audience, have met the four of them. Uh, we did met them last uh, session, but we, we meet them again in the prologue. But there's three unknowns who are getting into cryopods and they're all looking a bit shifty. So the audience is made to look, something may, if we get some complications, we can use them as a crutch for complications to make the story a bit more interesting. Uh, so we will have, now we'll have both uh, Crichton and Rimmer are gonna work together. So I'm gonna say, I don't know if you can, I think you can do this. I'm gonna say it's quite simple to do this. So because it's simple, they get plus two dice. And because Crichton is helping, I'm gonna give one. Rimmer is sitting in the pilots. Rimmer has one for piloting and four for agility. So Rimmer is attempting to dock the craft uh, against this. Uh, I think, and then we can look up pushing because if he fails this, he's gonna have to push. Uh, no, he got one hit, that's, that's good enough. And so there's a bit of a jar in the ship as the uh, docking clamps lock on to the external massive uh, structure, which is holding all of this huge quantity of liquid. So maybe it's a desert planet, which is why they need to have water. Uh, I'll write that down for, for uh, MT154 Nero might be a desert planet. Maybe it has no water and no oceans and that's why they need this because whatever's there, they need water transported to it. So we have, we're at this point, we are now gonna roll, uh, as they're attempting to do the dock, a, because this is suggested for, uh, I think this comes from the core book, which is a, it might be, I can't remember if it's the core book or from uh, Peter's book, but it says to do a starship encounter before they go into FTL, and going into FTL is all part of the proleg, prologue, uh, so they're entering the FTL. So a star, a star system encounter with near the space station would be a D66. We'll have yellows going, yellows going first. So we've got 35. So a military patrol craft. And I thought what I'll do is I will roll the names for these crafts. So if the name comes, because there's only a limited pool of names. If the name comes up again, we'll say that it's the same ship that we've, we've encountered. So using uh, Peter's list of ship names, D66 again, 41. 41 is the USCMC, Marine Corps, isn't it? USCMC, the USCMC, U USCMC Laureate, or Laurent, Laurent, Laurent. I can't read. So the USCMC uh, Laurent comes by and this is 2d6, so we add these ones up. So three, uh, they, they basically they do a scan, they're dismissive. Uh, Rimmer will put in a call, will do a call over uh, to attempt to say, uh, hi, everything's good, good, good here, and uh, there's no, no answer, which Rimmer thinks is a bit weird. So they've scanned the ship for some reason, uh, They've done a bit of like an overall check and then they've just gone off. And no, that's not normal because uh, this is just a transport uh, loading itself up. So we then will flash back, uh, we'll then move forward in time to all of them getting into the uh, cryo pods within the cryo deck uh, for FTL travel, basically prepping to FTL travel. And at this point, uh, we're still not on act one yet, at this point, just as they come into uh, FTL, uh, 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 FTL uh, we will then have, maybe to show, it's not very clear where, 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 start the mission, 
We'll make two encounter rolls. The first check is made when your ship is preparing to enter FTL, the outgoing encounter. Then make the second encounter roll when you arrive at your destination. Not every encounter will require you to deviate from your mission. Right, we're not gonna do the second encounter yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna switch into act one. Now, at the beginning of act one, we need to do several things. We need to roll our complication because our mission has one complication. And that is what was gonna, gonna bring us into act one and find out what's going on in act one. But we need to know overall what the theme of this mission is. So we have a random theme for the mission, uh, which we're gonna sort of use to color all of our responses and all of our reading of oracles. So we have six themes to choose from. Uh, there's piracy, corporate rivalry, collateral damage, colonial, mercy mission, or it all goes wrong, survival. That is the, that is the overall theme for this. Four, colonial exploration. So we have so the overall theme, so the theme over overall, so we're in act one of course, so the theme would then be something to do with exploration. So everything we're, we're founding is exploration, so something new, we discover something new. Uh, and then we'll roll the complication and then I'll tell you about, because about, I've talked about act one, act two and act three, but I haven't told you what act two, act one, act one and two and three is actually referring to. Uh, it's basically, it's the three part arc of, of telling a story. Right, uh, we have Space Trucker Complications, which is a D66. Yellows. Uh, 54. Cargo Mishap. There is a serious problem with the cargo, either moving, leaking, overheating, or catching fire. Okay. All right. Okay. There's a cargo mishap. So this is Act 3. So, uh, we will... Shall I do... We'll do a plot twist. I think we'll do a plot twist in Act 2 because there's various things that can happen with plot twists. Mayday, bad intel, sabotage, secret plot, murder, fire event, malfunction, time limit, alien outbreak. So, act two. So, uh, uh, act one. Act one is we start setting things up. A few minor things might go wrong. Something starts to happen uh, in act one that gives us a guide to what our story is. Act two, things get more heated up. Uh, we start to discover, you know, is there a, is there a saboteur on board? Uh, is there an alien on board? Is something like that on board? The, 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 the big thing begins to unveil itself definitely in causing issues and they have to react to it in Act 2. Act 1, you can ignore it. Act 2, things start to go big. Uh, Act 3 is the climactic end to our story and is, how, is basically the alien has to be defeated. The saboteur is, is, needs to be hunted down and we need to hunt down who the saboteur is. Uh, the corporate rivalry is unclosed and we have to uh, counter blackmail whoever the corporate rival is. Something like that in a three part story. And then we would close and return back to Starbase and uh, lick our wounds and next next mission. So we're into act one. So now we will call, now we will declare uh, act one is we're in. So we're in FTL travel. Uh, and uh, so everyone has gone into FTL, so prologue is finished, FTL travel, uh, we get to see uh, the ship, which mother, the AI, we'll call it mother, because uh, apparently most people do, uh, and the mother goes into, brings us into FTL, and the, the, the uh, ship uh, kicks out, so we travel a distance away from the space station, so as our FTL jump doesn't cause problems with the ship uh, and any gravitational wave uh, issues with the ship <laughs> that's stolen from Battlestar Galactica uh, and then the uh, Nostromo will kick into FDL travel I might I'm inclined uh, to roll piloting for the ship of a of six dice one two three four five six uh, and see uh, if we successfully jump in or it causes problems if it doesn't successfully jump in then act one, one of the complications will be uh, the ship won't jump. Uh, for some reason it won't jump, which means that everyone needs to be brought out of uh, cryo, and then we need to investigate what there is, and we'll roll some keywords to see what it is. Uh, but we do get a hit. So we get a hit, so Mother takes the Red Dwarf into FTL, and we jump. Uh, the jump is going to take us a certain distance, and then 
we're going to be brought out because something has gone wrong with the, uh, as, as we just said, something has gone wrong with the cargo. The, the water is leaking or something's wrong with the cargo. So we will, which is our complication. Uh, oh, one other thing, we won't do this just yet, but we'll do it afterwards. Uh, at the beginning of every scene that we describe, I have to remember to roll a stress dice. S act one, we roll one. Act two, we roll two. Act three, we roll three. If it comes up a, uh, a xenomorph, uh, we then have something weird happens. So of course, act one, there's a smaller chance than on all the other acts. Uh, and then something weird starts to happen. You know, the uh, engineering uh, hatch is constantly open and keeps need needing to be closed. Uh, uh, someone goes missing. A alien shows its face, something like that. So uh, we need to work out where, so we are traveling FTL this distance here. It's gonna take us about 90 days. Uh, we're traveling 16 days per sector. At which point, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can say six because if it's, uh, is that really, oh yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven, because it's here. So we'll go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, because it, it could be in the same sector that the, the leak is discovered, or we could be like out on the edge of the sector, or we could be out here. So anyway, anyway I'll, roll a, I'll roll a D6. Three. Uh, one, two, three. So we're in the middle of nowhere here. So the red dwarf is brought out of FTL here. So everyone comes out of FTL. We can see, uh, we will do, we'll roll. Nothing. Uh, so there's no, so this scene is everybody starts to come out of FTL. Uh, we basically, we bring the four key characters out. We're bringing, uh, the medical officer out just in case there's a problem with anybody when they come out. We're bringing uh, Lister out because he can fix whatever this issue is. We're bringing Rimmer out because there's a navigator, because piloting and navigational, he, the, he's got the responsibility part to. And Cat is coming out because they are the one might, who might need to make a call over we return or we do something else because they are our company representative. So that's, <laughs> there we go, I justified that, I didn't plan that. So that's why the four of them are coming out. Uh, so, so I don't know, I, we might not close the whole of Act 1. Act 1 might carry over to the next session because we've been going, I don't know, 25 minutes this might cut down to, and I'd like it to be about half an hour, 40 minutes. We've brought out a hypersleep. We don't know, well, we don't know why yet. I'm going to roll some keywords, which then might help us to work out, but we do know that there's a cargo mishap. So something's happening with the cargo. So we've got space, we've got some words for space, ship, Effect, okay, let's go, uh, we will go, I'm gonna roll one on the, sh on the sh so we'll say a word to do with the ship, a word to do with space, and a word to do with ship installation or ship, and the word to do with effect, so an effect. Let's see what how this works. I've not used these before, as, as I've not done a trial run. <laughs> Never do. So, ship or installation, 51. Cutting, I might roll on the other ship table as well. Uh, 55, seal, okay. Cutting seal, that makes sense because maybe there's some seals in there. So we might have to do uh, a, a, an, a, an EV, an extravehicular thing. So we've got space, 55 again, that's a lot of 55. 55, extravehicular, okay. That makes sense, extra vehicular. <sighs> okay. And then an, uh, something to do with effect. 24, contaminates. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll come out and then we'll go, uh, mother, what's happened? Why, why have you brought us out to the FTL? Hello, Rimmer. Uh, what, <laughs> I should really call it Holly, shouldn't I? Uh, hello, Rimmer. I'm afraid there's something wrong with the cargo. Or we could do it as a, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know how we want to do, do the voice of the AI. Do we want the voice of the AI to, AI, AI to be, and for, yeah, let's do it a voice, it's easier than da 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 But, but either, interpret it either way. I'll do it a bit dispassionately, so it could be read on the screen, it could be a voice. Uh, the, the cargo, the cargo seals are having issues 
uh, the cargo could become contaminated. Something has cut into the seal, uh, contaminating the cargo. Somebody is going to have to leave the vehicle, extravehicular travel, and go and weld the seals. Everyone turns and looks at Lister. You can imagine people sitting around the table, everyone would turn and look at the roughneck, go, well, that's your job, Sunbeam. Now, Lister does have as one of his uh, items, and I said I would look it up and find out what it is. Uh, Riven's got a pistol, he's the only armed person on board. He has an IRC Mark 50 compression suit. Let me look up what an IRC Mark 50 compression suit is. So, an Mark 50 compression suit is basically an EV suit. So he can wear that EV suit and go out and go and investigate and see if he can find out what's going on. So, we have, we have a docking area, which I would expect is, uh, could also work for, we've also got uh, EV areas, uh, so for our escape vehicles, uh, I, I would expect that that means that we can actually exit the vehicle uh, to go outside. So what, or, or I, I'm, I'm gonna say yes, they can. Uh, passengers, no passengers. So we are going to, so let's think. So what, what's gonna happen? So basically Lister's gonna have to leave the craft and go and do a repair and attempt to repair the seal. If he can't repair the seal, we're gonna have, we might have to go to uh, see if around where we are, there is a planet. So we've got several things nearby that we could try and get to to land to try and sort this out, but it's actually, it's, it, we can't land the cargo. The cargo has to stay out. Uh, we can try and, well, he needs to get out there and have a look at it. So let's say, let's first off, we'll say to, first off, uh, Rimmer is going to say to, uh, who's got the best Comtech? Cat, Cat has the best Comtech. I think Comtech is basically uh, computer like programming. So he might be able to uh, get, the ship, Comtech, programming, Androids, mainframes, and other specialist advanced. All right, so, so Cat, Cat is panicking, because Cat, Cat is going to say, Cat is going to attempt to, all right, I know, Lister doesn't want to go, that's what we'll do. Lister doesn't want to go outside. Lister's like, I'm not paid to go out and do stuff. No way, I'm not paid to do that. Uh, we could either have, use command to give, yeah, okay. So we will say that, uh, Rimmer is going to attempt to command Lister to get out and go and fix that. So Rimmer's going to say, because uh, he has pull rank, use command to give orders, and then Lister will have to go and do it. Uh, and Cat is going to quite like that. Now, if Cat, uh, uh, if this works, Cat is then going to attempt to see if, if uh, they uh, can run some diagnostics on the system and see if they can give Lister an advantage so Lister will know what tools to take out with him uh, and we'll basically give Lister plus one dice to fix this. So something has gone wrong, there's some problem out there and we don't know what that is. So uh, this is still, is this still the same scene? This is, could be a different scene, couldn't it? This is them, this is a separate scene, this is them standing around in the galley discussing what the problem is uh, and deciding that Lister needs to go outside. No complication. So uh, Lister's like, I'm not going. I could do, I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not going out there. No way am I going out there at all. No. And this is where Rumor's gonna go, I'm afraid you are. Yes, you are going out there. Uh, uh, he fails, so Lister, uh, Rimmer is going to feel stressed by this. Now, I'm going to quickly read pushing and see what happens when you push and get a stress dice. Okay, so you can push once. Pushing once gives you one stress. He's got one stress, which includes a stress die in. So uh, Rimmer is getting heated now and starting to raise his voice and shout at Lister. Oh, fouls. Okay, uh, Lister basically is, is saying, no, because that fails to give him a command. So let's go, no, I'm not going. If this if this fails, then that's fine. I'm not risking my life. I'm not risking my life. I'm not risking my life for this at all. Uh, so in which case, uh, Cat 
is going to attempt to manipulate Lister to go outside. Uh, if it fails, I don't know. I don't know what happens. My, oh, I know. I know. So, so Cat is going to use. Uh, so, because if that's not worked, so Cat is going to use uh, their uh, company leverage because uh, they have a data cards company leverage to basically offer Lister a bonus. Uh, which he'll put on the record, they will put on their record if Lister is willing to go outside, uh, which is two and two, and Lister is then going to have to try and defend against this, basically manipulation. So Cat is attempting to manipulate Lister, getting two hits. So Cat gets two hits in attempting to manipulate Lister and convince Lister, Lister will get a bonus out of this, but he's got to go outside, and Cat, they have done this many times before, getting people to do what they want to do, uh, the Lister only gets one hit. Uh, Cat, they got two hits. So Lister's like, all right then, but how much? Uh, so he's being offered a 900 bonus. It's only got 200 creds in the bank. Uh, it's being offered a 900 bonus on top for uh, risking themselves to go outside. And at that point, Lister's, ah, oh, all right then, all right. If this goes wrong, don't blame me. Don't blame me. Uh, so, so Lister will start, so we'll, and we'll end with uh, whatever happens uh, with Lister going outside. We'll end, we'll end this session with Lister going outside and working out whatever. We'll see what the actual problem is out there. Uh, so Lister's gonna suit up. So this, we won't bother doing it as a scene to, to, to do a complication. Uh, but we will do it when he gets outside. Uh, Lister suits up and goes outside Crichton is going to give Lister some help in suiting up. So checking, second checking his suit. Crichton's not said, I've not said very much so far, but I'm going to make sure everything's okay. So uh, this, so Crichton, uh, the uh, synthetic, uh, is helping Lister put the suit on and Lister's now suited up and he goes into the docking bay and attempts to go out. Now Cat, at this point, whilst Lister is suiting up, uh, Cat, they are going to run some diagnostics and try and see if they can give Lister a, an advantage. Uh, they have a wits of five and a comtech of three. They can re, they can push uh, wits rolls. Uh, yeah, so that's 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 two hits. So Cat uh, is able to run diagnostics on the process and on the. Uh, computer and they can get some diagnostics out of what's happening with the seal and the difference in air pressures and uh, the potential contaminants that's happening with the the seals that, that are uh, uh, around the outside of because we've got two let's say that we know that there is one there's only one there's only one seal broken for now there's only one seal broken uh, and cat is able to give lister one additional dice roll uh, for go, going outside. What has Lister got tools wise? Tools wise, Lister's got nothing additional. So Lister's going to have one for the additional. Uh, it's three. Oh, first, is, first Lister's got to get out there. So first, let's give Lister a mobility roll to see. So Lister has now exited the. Uh, so we've got a scene. Now this is this is Lister exiting. This is a new scene. Uh, no. Uh, so nothing. If nothing weird happens. Uh, Lister exits the vehicle. Uh, uh, in the dock, we've got Rimmer is overseeing. Uh, Rimmer's being really short and snappy with Lister because Lister didn't follow his command and that's caused, that's caused uh, Rimmer some additional stress. So uh, Rimmer is taking over. So would this be piloting or would this be comp? No, this would be something to do with piloting, wouldn't it? not really command or manipulation, this is piloting. So Rimmer is gonna to attempt to uh, to open and close the airlocks. Basically, Rimmer is doing the, the ship-based stuff. We could get let Mother do it, but Rimmer's insisting he does it because he's getting really stroppy. He's got four for agility, one for piloting, and then he's got his stress dice. Wee hey Okay, so due to, due to the stress of everything, uh, the, something goes wrong in the exiting area and it causes, now we get to do a panic roll. 
Uh, a panic can cause your skill roll to fail no matter what. Besides uh, pushing skill rolls, other stress, so when you, you do those rolls, those symbols come up, you cannot push the roll. Instead, you must immediately make a panic roll. All right, let's make, let me quickly read what a panic roll is. 104. Okay, we roll a D6 and we add our current stress level, which is one at the moment. One plus three is four. And on the panic roll table, four keeps it together. You manage to keep your nerves in check, barely. So, uh, the, the doors open badly. There's a gush of air which causes uh, Rimmer to be uh, sort of sucked out uh, because the pressure isn't leveled properly. Uh, uh, Lister to get sucked out. Rimmer holds it together, doesn't panic because of that happening. Uh, uh, but Lister does need to make a mobility roll, otherwise Lister is sort of thrown out and is going to have to try and manoeuvre back into the ship. Uh, and we'll then do a roll to see if... So this is basically, he hasn't clamped himself on uh, to a tether yet, and uh, he's, the uh, doors have opened prematurely, causing him to be sucked out, but because he rolled a success, He's able to quickly clamp himself on the tether and he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? You nearly thrown me out into space. Uh, so Lister, Lister, is, Lister is getting... So we've also, also got rival. Rimmer and Lister are rivals. So uh, Lister is, is starting to get some grudges against Rimmer now because he nearly threw him out. Uh, Rimmer just doesn't like him because he thinks he's a slob. So Lister is now outside of the craft, tethered on. He's going to need to manoeuvre himself to where Cat told uh, him that the uh, the seal was broken. So we will give three for uh, the agility, one for Lister's mobility, and we'll give one because he knows where he's going, uh, which is the assistance that Cat gave. Uh, two hits. So Lister is able to easily uh, and quickly uh, so for every additional one, you can do uh, a sort of like a, a trick. So let me have a look and see what the trick for mobility is. Give one to another PC, gain plus one modifier to a later skill roll related to this one, you impress someone. All right, we'll get plus one. So because of this additional, uh, Lister is going to get a plus one on, it's not related, but he's still in the same scene because he's positioned himself really well to do, to, uh, to do a check on the seal and to fix the seal, he will get a plus one for doing the seal, seal work. Uh, so Lister is now outside of the ship. Lister is going to, Lister's outside the ship, will roll. Oh, if this comes up, this will be awesome. Ah, it's a shame. Uh, so he's outside, he's gonna attempt to uh, check on the seal, see what the problem is, and then fix that problem. So we will roll to see if he can fix the problem and then we will have him come back into the ship and then we will roll some keywords to find out if we can work out what the problem was, uh, whether it was just a defect like a defect, or there was an actual something nefarious is going on. Uh, and then we'll close the session. So this is him attempting to repair it. Uh, one hit, so he he's perfectly fine in repairing the uh, seal, he's sort of like, we get a camera shot of him doing some work and there's some com traffic between Lister, Cat and him. Uh, Crichton is checking his vitals to make sure he's okay. So he, that's getting some information about his heart rate's fine. He didn't have to stress drive, so his heart rate's fine. Uh, and everything is going fine. And then Lister will come back into the ship. Uh, three and a one, see if he gets any problems getting back into the ship. Uh, we'll, should we push that? Yeah, let's push that so we can start getting people getting stressed. Uh, and a hit, that's good. So he he's able to get, so he gets, he slips, his foot slips, uh, and he starts to drift, but he pulls himself back on the tether, gets back onto the craft and gets inside. And he's a bit, because of that, and the, his the dusty stress, he's now like really annoyed because he could have just got lost into space again. Now, what was wrong with the seal? So there's only one seal in this thing. What was wrong with the seal? So let's roll on these tables and see what was possibly wrong with the seal. So we could do uh, effect ship. Let's go, let's do uh, outside and then we will do ship and then we will do, so we've got two personnel tables. 
Let's try a personnel word and then we will do an effect. So that's four. So what was wrong with the seal? Outside, 34, cold. Then we've got ship, uh, 16, key cards. Okay, one of the personnel tables. There's two tables for personnel. We'll pick the word that's best. Uh, 55, enemy or worship. Let's use enemy. And finally, we have effect. 25, abhorrent. All right, so I'm going to say that uh, the seal had not been, so this is the external seal on the transport, on the actual vessel. It was leaking water. Uh, because of the cold, we, uh, the, then that was some of the reasons why Lister was having problems, was the leak was coming out and freezing into quite hard, uh, because of course it's, it's cold out in space. It's cold out there, there's no kind of atmosphere. You're all alone, more or less. Uh, so it's cold, which means that it's forming ice crystals, which were dangerous and might have pierced his suit. But the only way that, that seal could have been, basically the seal hadn't been closed properly. The only way it could have been uh, opened up or not closed properly is if somebody had used a key card on it. So somebody must have done an EV and actually opened that seal a crack, just enough to cause problems before they left, which could be uh, could be a, 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 an enemy of Wayland Utani because Wayland is, is is the employee. So an enemy of Wayland at, went out and did something, and that's where the abhorrent thing because this could have caused problems. So it could have contaminated it. So something if somebody's trying to sac if somebody's trying to sabotage this, then why? Which I think actually because I was saying I, I didn't know whether Act One would actually carry over. I think. That so let's just do let's do let's do one roll which is this is this is as they're sitting around the galley because uh, they've all got to now get prepped up to go back into cryo uh, so as they can complete the journey no uh, so that would conclude Act One Act One will conclude they they know there's something dodgy going on uh, they've uh, dealt with this problem uh, which is going on outside there could be other problems going on they will go back. Uh, so mother will set everything up and they will go back into uh, cryo. Let's do a roll uh, for uh, Lister is going to make sure that everything, one, two, three, four, and then we'll work out uh, if we can reduce that stress. So he still gets that stress. So Lister is going to do a uh, check on the ship and everything though he's still heated and still a bit peeved, but he's checking everything uh, before they go back into cryo. Uh, three hits, so he's, he's, there is nothing wrong with the ship. Uh, so we'll put that down here. Uh, engineering fine. Uh, we will have Rimmer is going to do some engine checks and check that the uh, navigational uh, data is in as it should be. He's got four for agility, one for piloting. He also has a stress dice. Uh, oh, okay, so he's getting heated. Uh, there might be something, so our next complication could be due, due to the uh, data which has been gone in for the navigation is wrong. One, but he, he keeps the call. So, nav, they might go the wrong place. Might have issues go astray. Let's make, let's make mother, mother is going to do a piloting role and see if mother can catch uh, Rimmer's issue and then Lister can then hold that against him. Uh, okay, Mother pulls up Rimmer openly across the channels and says, I've noticed there's some problems with the navigational entries you have put into the system. Would you like me to correct those problems or would you like to continue with the current path? Just to point out, this will take us off course and into dead space. Lister, <laughs> and Lister's like, what are you doing? Are you trying to kill us all? Are you the saboteur? Are you, oh, uh, Lister is going to accuse, before they're going to cryo, Rimmer of being the saboteur. 
So Lister, he's, he's accusing Rimmer openly of being the saboteur. Rimmer's getting a bit heated. Lister's getting heated. Uh, Crichton, who hasn't done bugger all so far. Crichton is going to attempt to calm them all down. Uh, he is going to use something to do with empathy. What has he got? Medical aid? Uh, that doesn't really help. All right, let's do that. Medical aid. Uh, Crichton's got massive. Uh, he's got four. He's got eight in empathy. So I think he's just going to use manipulation plain, not medical aid, just because eight's big enough as it is. He's going to attempt to calm the situation down and just get them into cryo sleep. Yeah, okay, so he calms, he, he calms down Lister and Rimmer. They're still having a go at each other, but not causing any problems. And then uh, he's going to attempt to put them all into, that gives him 11, I've only got 10 of these dice. All right, this is not a stress dice, this is a normal dice. This is, this is Crichton attempting to prep them all for FTL. Uh, he gets one hit, that's good enough. So they're all fine, they all get prepped for FTL. And what's Cat, can Cat do anything? Cat hasn't got anything he really needs to do. Everything seems to be, he'll run one last run on the diagnostics to see if he can find anything. If he succeeds, we will know if there's an issue. If he fails, uh, there's, then he doesn't, he's none the wiser. Uh, okay. We know if there's an issue, so now I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say, does Cat know that there's an issue and resolves it? No. So there's no issue, so he doesn't resolve it. So he doesn't. So what he does is he knows there's definitely no issues, no issues with the computer system. But we do have a personnel issue going into Act Two between Lister and Rimmer, and we know that someone's committed uh, sabotage. And at this, we will do our final act final scene of act one which is them going into FTL and everything is fine there and then we move into act two which will then continue with what's going on and we'll see if we've uh, come back out of hypersleep or we can finish our journey to our destination and then find out what happens next at that stage and that is our first session of Alien how long did that go for oh that went long uh, thank you very much uh, I, uh, that, that seems to flow. We seem to have got a sort of story starting to form here. Uh, if you are a subscriber, thank you very much for being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, could you please hit the subscribe and then you will know when the next session comes out and uh, you'll be able to follow along with the story. Uh, thank you to our members for suggesting this game uh, and the, the actual format of it. That, that seems to work really well. Thank you very much. If you would like to also become a member, there is a link in the description of this, or there's the uh, community tab on PC. I don't think you can access it easily on the uh, app. Uh, there's other ways to support, and mostly your support is always appreciated in actually watching this and commenting and telling me how you feel and how you enjoy these sessions or not. If you have any suggestions of how we can form this story moving forward, let me know and I'll see if I can incorporate those. Otherwise, have fun and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.